everybody, we're back. We're working on the TTR again. If you found my last video about the jet kit we put on this bike helpful, I'm glad you did. I had a lot of fun making it. That last video about the jet kit took me a year of uh, trial and error to find the right jets for this carburetor. You know, as you could see in the video, I explained that the jets that came in my kit uh, were a little bit too big and I ended up sticking back with the 15 pilot and I recently readjusted my float height to be a little bit higher it's actually like perfectly level now so that worked really well and what I did go back with was a 107.5 main jet and so far the bike is running really well uh, you know good throttle response it starts well overall just running really well so now today we're going to be installing the BBR aluminum forged frame cradle on my TTR125. Let's get to it. All right, here it is. We got the BBR frame cradle. This is made of forged aluminum. All right, let's get this thing unboxed. So it looks like we might have some instructions as well as some stickers. That's real nice. Check this out. This thing is really lightweight. Just look at that. So there's the packaging. I'm not a big packaging person, but it is a good presentation. Alright, so it looks like we have the left side and the right side. And they'll somehow mount like this. Here's the skid plate that's going to bolt on to those frame cradle arms. Very nice. It's got countersunk holes. Here's our hardware. Looks like we get an extended bolt that goes through the back of the motor as well as tying into the back of these frames here. We got some new front bolts, some extended front bolts, and our little countersunk cap head screws. Cool. Alright, let's start taking this plastic skid plate off. I got my 10 millimeter Milwaukee uh, impact driver and we'll get this thing taken off and then we'll go ahead and we'll remove these other I think these might be 12 millimeter bolts and nuts from the bottom of the engine here there's one right in here as well as these two up here and uh, yeah we'll get moving on this all right let's get in here with this little Milwaukee here we got a 10 mil socket Alright, here we go. We got this stuck skid plate off. It's just a uh, polypropylene. A little bit of rubber here. And it's glued on there. Yeah. I mean, I suppose it's a decent skid plate, but uh, it doesn't protect your frame from uh, stretching and breaking the motor. And you can see I've taken a couple of little beatings on the bottom side of this here. Not too much. I've, I've always been really cautious about it. But. You know, I feel like it. it's kind of a design flaw. None of the Hondas have this. The Honda's frames always go below and underneath and connect. So this is a good little kit that's going to fix that problem for me. Okay, so I got my 12 millimeter socket on an extension. I also got my 12 millimeter closed end wrench and I'm going to attach this to my impact. We're going to take out these two bolts as well as this third bolt right on the bottom here after looking at the instructions they actually want you to keep this little mounting bracket here that way it'll keep the front of the motor supported as well but this way the uh, BBR frame cradle will just like kind of overlap over the top of that tying in the front uh, frame spar in with the back of the frame Gonna need more power. Alright. Shoot this. That motherfucker is stuck in there. Oh, 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 
<laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to pop this exhaust. All right, I'm gonna have to pop this exhaust loose because I can't get this bolt out without the uh, exhaust in there. So get this exhaust taken off real quick. All right, we just took out the two 10 millimeter bolts on the head of the bike. Now you just gotta get this last little 14 millimeter off of here and we'll have the exhaust pipe popped off. So I forgot there's actually a little 12 millimeter nut right under here. Let's get that off. All right, now that we've got the exhaust off, we can get this little bolt out. Oh, a lot of trouble to get you out. I hope you're worth it. <laughs> All right, now we can get out this little bolt under here at the 12 millimeter. So uh, here's the little 12 millimeter bolt. This is what the long bolt is going to replace. All right, time for the hardware. Let's get out this long bolt. All right, so we just got the rear bolt threaded through. Nothing tightened down yet. And we're going to fit through these two new, slightly longer, slightly longer front bolts. These new bolts aren't not in metric, they actually are half inch, half inch bolt heads and half inch nuts. I'm gonna have to wash this bike, it got dirty again. All right, we've got all the bolts threaded through. I started these nuts on here. I'm gonna take my little driver gun here and my half inch box wrench, as well as a half inch socket and we're just going to run these bolts down. Alright, let's move to the next step. Alright, we're on the next step here. I guess this is a 3 8 drive electronic torque wrench. I have this set to 10 foot-pounds and we are going to torque these two nuts and bolts and I'm also going to torque this one down here. All right, 10.6 foot-pounds on both bolts. Let's do this third one on the bottom. All right, last and final bolt. Probably won't be able to see the screen, but you'll hear the beeping. All right, that went to 10.3 foot-pounds. All right, let's put the skid plate on. All right, here's the hardware we need. And this is my 532nds Allen bit, or hex key. I got a little wobble on that one, but. All right, let's get the skid plate put on. Because these screws are so short, I don't want to lose them, especially because they hold on my aluminum skid plate. So I'm gonna use some Loctite 242. Alright, I just put in these two front screws. There's four more. I'll be right back. I'm going to put these in with Loctite just like I did these two. And I'll pick up right where I left off. Alright. I finally got all these little bolts threaded in. And we're going to just snug them down because I got blue Loctite on there. I'm out of battery, 
Uh, I just got all the bolts on the bottom threaded in, locked, tied it in. I'll have to film the rest of this video when I get this battery charged up. Alright, here we are. I just got it put all on, buttoned up, torqued down. Let's get it in here and see how this thing looks. As you can see, this gives a lot more protection to the bottom of the motor. That way if you hit any rocks or logs, it's not going to directly smash into the bottom of the motor. It's going to make it a lot easier to clean out because you got a lot more space in there. You can get in there with the pressure washer and blow all the mud out. I also just took apart the whole rear brake. And the axle. And I polished up all the uh, nuts and washers. And these little snail cams. So they're all nice and polished up to a mirror. I also polished up this brake lever or the brake actuator arm, as well as greased and uh, polished the pin for the brake drum. That way it works super buttery smooth now. It was actually starting to squeak a little bit. Luckily I caught it when I did. And looking at the brake pads on this thing, since I've been this thing for four years now, the brake pads look like they have, I uh, honestly I don't know how thick the pads were from the factory, but there's at least a quarter inch of brake pad material left. And it's, and it's not even just the, the backing or the casting on it, it's the full brake pad medium is like at least a quarter inch thick. Now you, I've used this brake a lot, but I try to I try to use the front and back brakes equally. But this brake has been getting a lot more use recently, just because this brake, this wheel is really uh, sketchy whenever you gotta apply the brake. But I recently uh, flushed these brakes out, and I got some kind of pesky air bubble in them because when I turn my I turn my handlebars to the left and lean the bike over any, it suddenly gets soft. But when I turn my handlebars to the right, the brake lever firms up. If anybody's got any answers for what's going on there, if anybody has a TTR 125 and has had that issue before, let me know. And uh, if you have a fix for it, also let me know in the comments. This is a nice piece of insurance to have. I'm not gonna have to worry about the frame on this thing snapping in half or breaking the motor in half. Now I guess I, uh, I'll be able to find the bottom out of these front forks and maybe the rear, I don't know. There aren't many videos on these BBR products. There's definitely photos of them, but there's no videos really that show an up close and personal view of these parts like the BBR chain guide and this new frame cradle here. So that's why I'm making this video, is to give everybody that wants to see these products before they buy them a better look. Because I was one of those people that wanted to see this product close up like this before I bought it and uh, I couldn't, so here it is. So far I'm happy with both these products. This product went on pretty easily that product went on in less than two minutes. Time for bonus footage.
Well, if you enjoyed this video, you found it helpful, leave a like, leave a comment if you have anything to say. And if you enjoy my videos, as well as my other videos, my previous videos, consider subscribing to my channel. I will have future content about the UBR 143 kit for this bike. That's the thing I plan to be putting on this bike. The big board. It's got plenty of grunt, but I would like something a little bit more on the top end as well. Just because this bike is so flat in the power band. Stay tuned.